found a bit of game pie in the larder. Thought you were going to have a cup of tea. What? You said you were going to make yourself a pot of tea. Did I? Hmm. I changed my mind. Ah. She keeps forgetting things. What? Nothing. Look at it, Peggy. Just look at it. Do you make any repayment claims? Well, do I? Let me see. Oh, no. They've obviously made a mistake. They think you're a man. A man? Well, they've called you Esquire. Disgraceful. I shouldn't worry about it. If Cousin James was alive, I'd get him onto this. Ignore it. He'd have known what to do. Cousin James? He was one of the high-ups in Somerset House. Very clever, very conscientious, rather severe. A socialist of the Huxley Antimacassar period, when it was the acme of man's rights to work 12 hours a day, go to night school free for another six, and then sleep for six hours on as hard a bed as could be found. He'd have sorted this out. Yes, he probably would. He was always taking up the legal cudgels on her behalf. Where's the writing paper? Well, it's on the desk, but don't do it now. Do it in the morning. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. I should please myself what I do. I won't be bossed about by anybody. What was I going to say? Oh, the Rackstraw's dog. It was during the war, you see, and these people, the Rackstraws, they lived nearby. They gave their dog to the army to be trained for frontline service. But for some reason or another, maybe, it was one dog too many for them. This dog was sent back home. After his training was complete, he was sent back home. The only trouble was, he had been taught fierce ways. He'd been taught again his wolf behavior. He'd been taught to fight and bite. So, when his fond master went down the garden path to meet him, the dog bared his fangs, leapt up and tried to bite the throat of his loving friend. So the man clubbed him down with his heavy stick, so the dog died and they buried him in the back garden. On his gravestone they wrote, He died for king and country. Peggy dear, I forgot the milk. Yes, it's here. Peggy! Yes, I'll bring it. an unchanging routine. Every morning she caught the train to her office near the Strand, and every evening she traveled back to Palmer's Green, to Avondale Road, and to the Lion Aunt. Life is like a railway station, Stevie said. One day they brought her home early, in great distress. Her wrists were bandaged. She took the knife, its cruel edge would bite into her flesh. Had she the resolution or the art to bear the smart and drive it to her heart. Death, that sweet and gentle friend, failed to respond to her summons. Life continued.
Peggy. Peggy. Coming. Oh, damnation, take it. Peggy, what are you doing? Peggy. Here we are. A nice ham um, salad. My soppy blankets on the floor. So I see. Come on. Oh, let's tuck you in. There we are. How's that? Mm -hmm. That's better. <clears throat> There's a special treat for pudding. What? Eat your salad first. What is it, Peggy? Special treat, but eat that first. <laughs> uh, she can't do much these days, poor darling. So it's up to me to run the house. She abdicated with great reluctance, as you can imagine. Now that I am leading a domestic sort of life, I'd rather do the washing up than write. Housework is the most marvellous excuse for not doing anything else. I mean, clearing up a room, throwing everything away, it's marvellous. And then I feel so tired, I go to sleep all afternoon. I love going out and buying the food and stripping bits off and hacking it up. It's the most wonderful way of getting rid of aggression. And then if I write, I write in the back room after tea. It's a nice room with a good view of the garden and of the birds. Is everything all right? Lovely, dear, thank you. Dearest lion aunt. I will never leave you, darling, to be eaten by the starling, for I love you more than ever in the wet and stormy weather. Tasty ham. It's York. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> Very tasty. <laughs> Junkets, her favourite, were well, Stevie's special junket. When it's set, I grate nutmeg all over the top, and then I add a tablespoon of whiskey or brandy. It's really delicious. It was a house of female habitation. Two ladies fair inhabited the house, and they were brave. For although fear knocked loud upon the door and said he must come in, they did not let him in. <sighs> and so we pass our days. Cooking, housework, writing. The occasional glass of sherry. <laughs> I've uh, retired now, of course. Oh, I retired early. Oh, it is so wonderful not having to go to the office every day. I wasn't cut out for the business world. I never fitted in. <gasps> I've forgotten to feed the birds. Oh. Oh, Peggy, dear. Hmm. Lunchtime! Lovely baby! 